Well, the world's top climate scientists say it's now or never if we want to avoid disastrous climate change, but drastic and immediate changes can save our planet. The United Nations IPCC has officially published its report looking into what the world needs to do to halt the impacts of global warming before it's simply too late. Richie Merzian from the Australia Institute joins me now for more on this. Richie, lovely to have your company today. Thank you for joining us. Now, the message here is Sorry. now or never. But it's been the same dire message in the last report as well. So why hasn't anything changed? It, it comes down to the politics of it. The science keeps getting clearer and clearer. And when it comes to the technologies, they're getting cheaper and cheaper. Renewables are already the cheapest way you can make electricity. Electric vehicles are being rolled out by every major car manufacturer. But the policies are still not in place to expedite the transition. And the ambition is not there to push it along at the speed we need to hit net zero by 2050. And that's also come through clearly. In fact, the scientists went a step further and they pointed out some of the key barriers. So they said in some countries like the United States and in Australia, it's been the influence of the fossil fuel industry that's pushed back on the rapid transition that we require for clean energy. So they also gave some indication as to why we're not moving fast enough because we certainly aren't. While climate change is critical, we ultimately need everybody on board to be able to make a substantial difference. So if the current messaging isn't working to get people on the same page, then what can be changed for that to happen? I think at this stage, there's a certain level of desperation. And you heard that in the United Nations Secretary General's comments, where he basically calls out companies and countries that are not doing enough and are pretending like their efforts are sufficient. He even goes so far as to say that they are lying. There's this issue of greenwashing now. We're past the, the time where we deny climate change, the worst climate skeptics deny it completely. We're in the phase of delay. And that delay comes in many forms, one of which is investing in false solutions. Another is saying you're doing enough whilst not doing it. And so the UN Secretary General has set up an expert panel led by the former Environment Minister in Canada with 20 members from around the world. And that panel will investigate these greenwashing claims, investigate these issues of delay, of pretending to do enough that some of the largest companies and the largest countries are undertaking because that's the real barrier we face now. It's not technological, it's not scientific, it's this put this political barrier and hopefully this UN panel will help unlock some of that. Yes, you mentioned there it's being used as sort of like a political bargaining tool when it shouldn't be. There is no real debate there anymore. The science speaks for itself about climate change. Do you think that leaders are holding back and sort of just saying what, what looks good on paper, as you mentioned there, and saying what everybody wants them to hear, but really they're not doing any action? To some extent, yes, I, I, think, I think you're right. Some political leaders see this only as an issue that needs to be neutralized, just doing enough so they can clear the air and focus on their pet projects, be it national security or in terms of investing in particular economic sectors. Um, if you look at the, the full picture, you, you get a better idea. So it's all good saying that you're going to reduce emissions and invest in renewable energy. But if you're still investing heavily in new fossil fuel production, then obviously you're not serious about climate change. Because the UN panel um, is aware of this and will investigate this. But also beyond that, the International Energy Agency has confirmed there's no more room for new fossil fuel projects, new developments. So you can't be doing both in the sense they're mutually exclusive. You're either serious about climate change and investing only in the solutions or you're just talking out of both ends and also investing in fossil fuel production. Richie Mersey, and thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. My pleasure.